Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning. Peace of the Lord be with you all as we gather to worship today. Uh, I want you to think about uh, the last Sunday of the church year. The last Sunday of the church year is kind of the culmination of everything. And we really focus on, look forward to you know, Jesus coming and all his glory and, and everything that goes with it. And so sometimes the alternate title for this Sunday is Christ the King Sunday. And so you're going to hear a lot of that in our hymns today as we refer to Christ as our King. And, and when that thought, I want you to think about, you know, things of, of wealth and riches and that kind of thing. What is your most treasured physical possession? What is your most treasured physical possession? So think about that, and then when we come into our message, we'll, we'll talk about that again. So before we get underway, let's turn and greet one another, wish each other peace of the Lord, stand and do that. So as we celebrate Christ as our King, we sing, Come Thou Almighty King. 
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But to you there is forgiveness, therefore you are here. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Let's pause for a moment, reflect on God's word, and examine our hearts and minds as we confess our sins to our Father in heaven, personally and individually. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a call to ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's join in reading our intro at responsibly half verse by half verse and join together in the glory be to the Father. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. Come, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord. Who stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands to the holy place. And bless the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. We join in the Kyrie. The Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us join together in praying the collect of the day. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you reign among us by the preaching of your cross. Forgive your people their offenses that we, being governed by your bountiful goodness, may enter at last into your eternal paradise. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated for the scripture readings. The Old Testament reading today for the last Sunday of the church year is from Malachi chapter 3. Your words have been hard against me, says the Lord. But you say, how have we spoken against you? You have said, it is vain to serve God. What is the profit of our keeping his charge or of walking as in mourning before the Lord of hosts? And now we call the arrogant blessed. Evildoers not only prosper, but they put God to the test and they escape. Then those who feared the Lord spoke with one another. The Lord paid attention and heard them, and a book of remembrance was written before him of those who feared the Lord and esteemed his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, in the day when I make up my treasured possession, and I will spare them as a man spares his son who serves him. Then once more you shall see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and they have wiped the blood of the Lamb. Blessed are those whose strength is in you. The epistle is from Colossians, chapter 1. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel, and we join in singing the Alleluia verse. chapter. <coughs> there followed Jesus a great multitude of the people and of women who were mourning and lamenting for him. But turning to them, Jesus said, daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do these things when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, 
Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. And the people stood by watching. But the rulers scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, You're the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly for receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. And let us join together and confess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory, to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Congregation may be seated as we sing the first three verses of Crown him with many crowns. mercy and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
And the text for our message is our Old Testament reading, and I'll read just a portion of that one more time. Your words have been hard against me, says the Lord, but you say, how have we spoken against you? You have said, it is vain to serve God. What is the profit of our keeping his charge or walking as in mourning before the Lord of hosts? And now we call the arrogant blessed. Evil doers not only prosper, but they put God to the test and they escape. <clears throat> then those who feared the Lord spoke with one another. The Lord paid attention and heard them. And a book of remembrance was written before him of those who feared the Lord and esteemed his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts. In the day when I make up my treasured possession, this is our text. Please pray with me. Father, we ask, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill our hearts, fill our minds, fill our souls that we might recognize that you have made us your own, redeemed us by your blood, paid for us on the cross. <coughs> Help us to recognize the value that you placed upon us and recognize also what awaits us and what you have prepared in your kingdom as we await that opportunity to be with you forever. Strengthen us to be faithful until that very last moment before you call us or come again. In your name, amen. So, what is your most treasured physical possession? What is your most treasured physical possession? Say that again. Okay. Is that for? Okay. So, crochet hook says Dawn. Grandchildren. Okay. Anybody else? Dave. My my children and grandchildren. Okay. Anybody else? Mary? Mary says her wedding ring. Okay. Anybody else? Family? Okay. Anybody else? Thomas? My first call was my bed, but I usually get Thomas. Your bed? But lately, I've been just trying to watch the hog on the Okay. All right. So. My most treasured physical possession is my wife. Even though she would say, you don't show it. Uh, <laughs> still, it's the truth. Because um, you know, I'm always amazed and, and I, I think about how God brought her into my life. But more than that, the things that she is able to do that don't come easy to me at all. I mean, she can talk with people... Um, that she's never met before, long conversations, and I'm like, where is this coming from? And, and yet, that, that's a little bit harder for me. And, and so there, there are things that uh, she's able to do and bring to, uh, to my life and ministry that I truly appreciate. Um, now, I, somehow I know this is going to be used against me later today, but oh well. Uh, and and I, want you to, I want you to think about... <coughs> All those things that you mentioned, your treasured physical possessions. Now let's flip that, and hopefully you heard it in the reading. What or who is God's most treasured possession? Yeah, we are. We are. But do we always feel that way? Yeah, and, and why is that? Why is it that we don't always feel that way? Even though God says it to us, even though God reiterates it to us, why do we not always feel that way? Maybe we don't always need him. Don't always understand him. Didn't get what you asked for. 
and we're sinners. Yep. And we see a lack of justice going on in our world, true or false? Absolutely. And that's the gripe that we hear the people of Malachi's time making. And a lot of us might have a similar gripe. So when we look at what God is saying through Malachi, he says this to the people in Malachi's day. Your words have been hard against me, says the Lord. But you say, how have we spoken against you? God says, you have said, it is vain to serve God. What is the profit of, keeping, of our keeping his charge or walking as in mourning before the Lord of hosts? Next slide. And now we call the arrogant blessed. Evildoers not only prosper, but they put God to the test and they escape. Is that a valid complaint? Maybe for them, okay, because what we think they're getting away with, I'm going to ask you to think long and hard. Are they really getting away with it? You see, if God were to bring immediate justice, and I said this a couple of weeks ago, if God were to bring immediate justice, would any of us be here right now? No. Because at the first sin in our life, we'd have been toast. We've been frying in hell. But the fact of the matter is, God is patient. And God is patient with all mankind, wanting to give them the opportunity to come to repentance. What many people who walk with God for a time and then decide, well, what's the point of all this? Go back to the previous slide again and, and listen to that word. It's vain to serve God, which means it's pointless. It's useless. There's, there's nothing fruitful in serving God. That's what they're saying. And that's what we hear a lot of in our world today, especially from people who've been Christians for a time and decide to walk away. It didn't bring me anything. It didn't accomplish anything for me. It just made me sad. What's the profit of keeping his charge or walking as in mourning before the Lord of hosts? Because people think they know God, and yet they don't. They think they know God, and they think they can tell you exactly who God is, but a lot of these have never cracked open a Bible. And they've never cracked open a Bible and really, truly gotten to know and understand the true God. Because if they think God is only about wrath and anger, about you know, bringing you know, condemnation, if they think that God is only about making us walk in mourning all the time, they don't know God. And if you're listening to me and saying, well, maybe I don't know God, well, and the point of this is the very thing that God wants us to know him, who he truly is, how he truly feels about us, what he truly cares about us means. So when we go to verse 16, and could you go there, listen to what it says. Then those who feared the Lord spoke with one another. The Lord paid attention and heard them. And a book of remembrance was written before him of those who feared the Lord and esteemed his name. Go back again, Wes. Who wrote the book? Who wrote the book? It says a book of remembrance was written in his presence. Who wrote it? He did. He's remembering you. He's remembering your faith. He's remembering your love. He's remembering your faithfulness. He's remembering your service. He's remembering 
and what he knows is in your heart. He's remembering. He's remembering why. Go back to verse 17 again, Wes. Look at verse 17. Read the first phrase with me. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts. Read this with me. In the day when I make up my treasured possession. And I want you to stop there. We're going to get to the rest in a moment. Whether you think it or not, whether you feel it or not, whether you revel in it or not, does God love you? Are you precious to God? And if you are loved by God and precious to God, does that mean God will do anything to take care of you, anything to provide for you, anything to give you his very best? Yeah. And that's what we need to remember. He wrote a book of remembrance as to the response, and we need to take the time to do some remembering about what God has done, what God is doing, what God will ever do, for you and me. Because that most treasured possession, put up that picture, Wes, that most treasured possession to God is not something that looks like this. But that treasured possession to God is something that you see in the mirror every time you look at one. And you're going to look in a mirror and say, not good. You're going to look in the mirror of your heart, the mirror of your soul, and say to yourself, sinner, ugly, worthless. And God's going to look at you and say, redeemed, loved, paid for, chosen by me, and made my own. That's where we go back to the scripture reading again, Wes, and that's where we see God in 17. They are mine. They are mine. Why? They are mine because not only did I create them, but then I also did what? Redeemed them. Bought them back. Made them my own by the blood of my own son. Made them my own by paying a sacrificial price for them. That is love. The love of sacrifice. I'm going to throw you a curveball. Paul says in Romans, He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us, own th give us all things? So when we hear the last words, And I will spare them as a man spares his son who serves him. The passage you just heard said that God didn't spare his own son. For what sake? For what reason did he not spare his own son? For us, to save us, to redeem us. But did he spare his own son? Take it to all the way. Did he spare his own son? Yes. Christ is risen. He is risen Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Resurrection victory. God spared his son, brought him back to life. And in so doing, what does he do for us? He doesn't say, okay, your sins are forgiven, but that's the best I can do. What's the best that he can do? Not only forgiving your sins, not only pulling you out of hell, but also giving you everlasting, everlasting life. Everlasting life in his presence. He spared us also. He pulled us out of the fire of hell and he brought us into his kingdom like the promise that he made to the thief on the cross. Say it with me. Today you will be with me in paradise. That's a promise he makes to all of us. 
then why does it seem there are people that are straying away from him? Why does there seem to be that there are people who kind of turn their backs on him for a while, or maybe turn their backs on him, who walk with him for a while, but said, nah, you know. Maybe what we need to do is what the people here in Malachi's time did. Go back to verse 15 again, Wes. Uh, actually, it was 16, excuse me. Then those who feared the Lord... Finish it. Do we do that? I just talked to you about my wife speaking with everybody. But do we speak to each other? Do we speak with each other? I mean, what's the point of really, and I'm going to ask you this again, what's the point really of coming to church? What's the point? Number one, to hear God's word. Yep. What else? Feeds your soul. Fellowship. And how would you describe that fellowship? Maybe something like speaking with one another? Would that be a good description of fellowship? Because in that fellowship, what are we doing? You're encouraging me, and I'm encouraging you. You're supporting me, and I'm supporting you. You're loving me, I'm loving you. Just that mutual support is important. And that's why God remembers it. And he's saying, look, they cared about each other. They cared about each other enough that they showed concern for one another and supported one another, uplifted one another. So that means when you're not here, what does that mean? Someone that is here is not being supported as much as they could be here. True or false? True. See, God gave us as gifts to each other as well. Don't take this the wrong way. See, you are a treasured possession to me also. As much as you are to God. Members of the congregation, members of Redeemer family. I value you when I see you, and I value you when I don't see you, and I miss you when I don't see you, but you are always valued. Not only by God, but also by me. And that's what we need to recognize for each other. As we listen to this part of God's word, part of being in his kingdom, part of being in his household, part of being in his family, to means uplift and support each other. Does that mean we're always going to get along perfectly? No, because we're sinners. But does that mean we don't know anything about forgiveness? Does that mean we don't know anything about reconciliation? Because that's what God teaches us. That's what he wants us to share with each other. But most importantly, God values us. Go to 17 again, Wes. God values us. Makes us his treasured possession. And the day when I make up my treasured <coughs> possession. And he spared us and he gave us life. Last verse. And once more, you shall see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked. Between the one who serves God and the one who does not serve him. When will that take place? Judgment day. You might not see it in the here and now. You might not think that people are getting justice. You might not think God's taking care of us as he ought to take care of us. But there will be a day when it will be absolutely clear and plain who believed and followed and served, who said, no, thank you. I don't want to serve you. I don't want to follow you. I don't want to believe in you. 
Where do you want to be? He loves you. He made you his own. He made you his most treasured possession. Where does he want you to be? In Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Spirit be and abide with us all. Amen. Our gifts to our Lord are now going to be brought forward as that takes place. We'll sing the last two verses of Crown Him with Many Crowns. If you forgot to drop your offering on the way in, you can drop it on the way out. We join in singing, uh, and those heading to Sunday school may do that at this moment. We join in singing the last two verses. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, our eternal King, we come before your throne praising you. Praising you that you have chosen us to be your own. Made us your treasured possession. Washed us with your blood. Redeemed us and gave us the gift of everlasting life in your presence. Strengthen us. Strengthen us with the joy of that love, the joy of that gift of possession that you have made us your own. And bless us. Bless us that we might be certain, certain of all that you do and all that you give and all that you care about us, that your love, your care for us, is indeed real and true and reliable and trustworthy. Help us. Help us to turn back to you also in love, to joyfully serve you, follow you, walk with you, that we might be together in a true relationship. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would be with all of those who are in physical need. We pray for Keith Larson undergoing testing, for uh, those preparing for surgery, for Jill Baldwin and for Eric Konofsky. We also pray for little Doug Beal who is still in the hospital. We pray for those that are undergoing treatments. Jan Barkley, Brian Debsky, Karen Hansen, Cindy Heidke, John Kiley, Micah Kohler, Jerry Kushel, Tiana Lang, Roger Nowak, Gene Palomino, David Schmidt, Jerry Schwan, Katie Vadim, and John Wirch. In addition, we pray for those recovering. We pray for Bud April, Mark Baldwin, Bob Barrett, Giles Bellin, Joan Burquist, Elmer Dotz, Jill Kern, Mike Platt, Reggie Mule, uh, Chuck Rentmeister, Patty Spielbauer, Ronnie Wardeke, and Neil Zastro. We also pray for those who have ongoing health problems. For Neil Anderson, Klaus Becker, Bruce Burt, Luis Christopoulos, Bonnie and David Doby, Tom Dufek, Sharon Eichmann, Ed Forrell, Luann Gersmel, Penny Grammuller, Brenda Gunder, Vi and Ron Howard, Helen and Sue Keenitz, Susan Kupski, Michelle Larson, Keith Lowe, Tom Meath, Marshall and Sheila Piotter, Mary Perlott, Marion Schmeling, Dawn Schrader, Phyllis Meester, Bill Wagner, Bob Zitlow, and Lori Zellner. <coughs> Provide for them, Lord. Strengthen them 
with the gifts that only you can give. Bring them healing if it is your will and assure them of your love and presence. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who mourn. We pray especially for the family and friends of Louis Wassenberg, who was laid to rest on Thursday. And we also pray for uh, the family and friends of Susie Herman as we remember the first anniversary of her being called home to you. We ask that you would remind those who mourn, that you have destroyed death's power and you have given life in its place as you gave up your son, but you spared him by giving him life, so you spare us by giving us life also. That is our hope, that is our strength, that is our peace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those who are persecuted for their Christian faith, Strengthen them to stand firm no matter what threats they face. And we pray for victims of natural disaster, especially those who were caught in the path of Hurricane Nicole and the other recent hurricanes. Provide healing to the hurting. Comfort for the morning. Provide for those who've lost so much. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for victims of senseless violence with random shootings in so many places. We ask that you would help bring peace and help us to speak to one another, encourage one another, and help be a message of peace in our world as we bring the message of your love into this world. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for the people of Ukraine. We pray especially for those who are still under fire in country and also for those who are refugees in other countries. Provide for them, sustain them, Protect them and bring peace, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father in heaven, we pray for all Christian ministries around the world. We pray especially for our school ministries of Trinity Lutheran School and NEW Lutheran High School and all our sister congregations and their ministries here in Green Bay, throughout Wisconsin, and around the world. Fill us all with the joy of our salvation and all help us to speak to one another, encourage one another, uplift one another as we walk in their faith, and as we share the faith. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for our military personnel, especially Paige Wagner, Tessin Sean LaRue, Steve Medaski, Roy and Esmeralda McDonough, Maggie Knoll, and Nathan Schrader. Uplift them, strengthen them, and bless them with your presence as they put themselves in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And Father, we pray for our president, our governor, and all in positions of authority, both elected and appointed, that these men and women would turn to you, would put themselves into your hands, would submit to your authority, and honor you as they wield the authority that they have received from your hand, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Into your hands, Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who, out of love for his fallen creation, humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying... us in your kingdom and teach us to pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also he took the cup, and after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Congregation may be seated as we come forward for distribution. We join in singing the Agnes Statement. <laughs>
receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We'll join in singing our closing hymn, O Jesus, King Most Wonderful. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. for a moment of silence. with us today and so uh, I'm going to invite Steve Olson up and uh, Steve's got a word from the Gideons he'd like to share with you and uh, talk about their ministry. All yours Steve. heard quite a bit in the past three weeks about our servicemen. Okay. And I'd like to speak to one, about one. Uh, he came from uh, Switzerland. His name was Mark, and he was called to service. So, as many uh, perhaps many men here have gone into the service. He went to the basic training, but he got into trouble, and uh, he was sent into, de into uh, detention. Now, I don't exactly know why, but when he arrived there, he saw two books. One was a book of regulations, army regulations, and one was a New Testament, just about like this. Now, he chose to read the New Testament, and he started to read, and he became very interested in it, as New Testaments are. <coughs> so, he realized that he really didn't know the Lord, but uh, when his 10 days of detention Ended, he had a chance to read a great deal and it changed his life. So when he got up to leave, he left the New Testament there for someone else 
Uh, it was placed there by the Gideons because he already had one. Uh, the Gideons get a chance to hand out New Testaments to servicemen in some countries, and also in ours. Now, this New Testament is just a wonderful thing. It's like the tip of God's sword. It's changed so many people. That's why the Gideons take these testaments and hand them out to colleges, to our college students, to uh, high school students, some of the older grade school students, and uh, many other different areas. And our wives hand out Bibles this size and uh, to many different offices, to doctor's offices, uh, different places. And you may have noticed that the Gideons place these Bibles in hotels. And the Word of God is treasured throughout many different places. That's why we try to keep them in hotels. And in order to keep the Bible in good shape and everything, we go through every year and check them out. If they're missing or damaged, we replace them. As a matter of fact, every six years, we replace all the Bibles in hotels. Now, we're not able to do this alone. Uh, we're supported by many different people and also by many churches. And we truly, truly appreciate that. But there's other things that we do also. I don't know if I've mentioned it here before, but we have something called Gideon cards. And those cards we hand out, for example, perhaps at a funeral in memory of someone, or on someone's special day, or if we're just thinking about a person. And they're very self-explanatory, but you know, in many cases, uh, at the gift, let's say $20 is given, that's sometimes enough to pay a bill. But if, if it's given and the Gideons uh, handing out uh, Bibles to different countries uh, in the United States. That Bible is out there for a number of years. And we, we've gotten a lot of appreciation letters back from handing those out. Okay, one other thing. Uh, even though that young man was recruited in Switzerland, uh, the Gideons are also recruiting perhaps new members. So I'd just like to mention that uh, if you're so moved, if some men and our wives are so moved, uh, we do have a place for you in the Gideons. We're not very demanding. But one of the things, uh, we do get a chance to spread the word of God. So I'd really appreciate all the kind attention you've given us. I hope my voice carried all the way out, but uh, we really do appreciate it. And thank you, Pastor Paul, for allowing us the time to come and speak. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay. So we, we are going to take a door offering for the Gideons today. Uh, every penny that we give toward the Gideons puts scripture in someone's hands. Maybe it's a motel room. Maybe it's a servicemen's hand. Maybe it's a student's hand. Somewhere, some way, shape, or form, someone's getting a Bible because of a donation that is made. And so we're going to help try to do that today. So if you can, help us out. Great. And if, and if not, there's information in the insert of your bulletin. You can think about it and maybe do it later. Um, also, a couple of reminders. Thursday, uh, Thursday is Thanksgiving. Our Thanksgiving worship is on Wednesday, Wednesday at uh, 6.30. And so we really want to pack the house for that. And then uh, the following Saturday, um, Saturday? Yeah. yeah. Following Saturday, uh, they have the Advent by Candlelight. Um, and so if you are interested in being involved in the Advent by Candlelight, um, you guys still have some room? Yes, they can use a small room. Okay. You can see either Kathy right here or Mary says no. So they see Kathy. <laughs> so... See, Kathy, if you're interested in being involved in the Advent by Candlelight, it's put on by our uh, RWCS LWML uh, Women's Society. 
And then uh, Ruby's Pantry coming up, uh, not this coming Monday, but the following Monday. And then uh, we begin our midweek Advent services after that, so a week from Wednesday. Advent services uh, will be at 4 o'clock and 6.30. There will be a meal in between, and that meal not being here at church, but over in uh, the other school building. So I encourage you to uh, come, worship, and be fed in both body and soul. Um, I think that's it. Any other announcements I missed? Church decorating. Okay. Church decorating. Uh, there's information in the bulletin that it was on a Thursday, but it is on uh, Saturday, uh, Saturday, December 3rd. So kind of keep that in mind if you want to help us decorate for Christmas. I think that's it. Peace of the Lord go with you. You belong to him. He loves you. Thank you.